So great to have everybody on today. My name's Kelvin Chin, and uh, we have, oh, about a half a dozen folks here who are going to share with you, the audience, how the meditation technique that I teach called Turning Within Meditation is, has helped them in their lives in their various ways. So they're going to share their own personal stories with you. Uh, I'm going to let them do most of the talking today, but I'll just kind of introduce folks here who don't know anything about the meditation technique that I teach, um, how it's different from other meditation techniques yeah, right there. Bless you, Matt. Um, so what I teach is a very, very easy meditation process. There's no concentration, no focusing the mind. You don't focus, uh, focus on your breath. You don't clear the mind of thoughts. You let your mind think whatever it's thinking. And so... Um, whatever your mind's thinking, it's thinking. You don't try to focus your mind or clear the mind of thoughts, anything like that. Okay. Um, and you do it, you only have to do it for about 10 to 15 minutes each time, twice a day. That's it. And you can do it in a noisy place, a quiet place, private place, a public place, anywhere you can think, basically, you can do this simple technique that I teach. Um, and if people want to learn more about it, they can either go to turningwithin.org, which is my uh, one of my nonprofit websites, or you can go to kelvinchin.org. Uh, you'll see that um, that 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 uh, spelled out and so forth next to my name on on the Zoom link here. Um, so why don't we start with uh, Michaela uh, over in the UK? And Michaela, why don't you tell us your story about, you know, how we met and how you found me and that kind of thing and how the meditation has helped you. And uh, and you can weave in some uh, funny stories about the kids if you want to. <laughs> Go ahead. Hi, everyone. I'm Michaela. I'm, um, I think I met Kelvin, I think it was like 2021, possibly. So before then, I was researching online because I've always suffered with death anxiety and fear of death and dying so I was doing a lot of research on how to overcome that and I kept popping up on Kelvin's page and at that time I was a bit wasn't in the right place I was just kind of doing a lot of research you know it's taking up a lot of my time and then after COVID and the pandemic I have two small children at the time they were four and um well newborn and two and my anxiety really sort of skyrocketed I was started to experience panic attacks for the first time. I didn't know that they were panic attacks at the time. And it got to a point where it became really difficult to leave the house. So leaving the house, I was having panic attacks. I couldn't be in the car for a long time. Um, you know, I'd get to work. I'd often be in the toilets just thinking like, I just need to get through this day. I just need to get home. I'd get home and I'd get straight into bed. And it was just these overwhelming feelings. It wasn't just death anxiety at this point. It was just generalized anxiety. So I thought right now is the time I have to do something because it was really impacting my life. Like I'd never experienced anxiety like that before. So met Calvin, took the class. And at the beginning, I was in such a place. I thought, how is this going to help me? I cannot imagine not having this anxiety. So we did the classes. It took me a while to understand, like, this is something I had to really put into my day. I had to make the time for it. It wasn't just one of these things I could dip in and out of, you know, maybe do it once, leave it a couple of days, pick it up again. So I started to do it regularly and Kelvin was meditating with me, I think daily at the beginning and checking in on me. And after a while, I just started to see like really little differences, like, I'd go out and I think, oh my goodness, I haven't had a panic attack whilst I'm out in the car. And slowly, slowly, as it became part of my daily routine, I was doing it morning when I got up and when I'd go to bed, slowly, slowly, I started to just see how it was reducing my anxiety. And also at the beginning, it just gave me a break from the anxious thoughts that I was having all day. It was a really welcome break to just take that time for myself. It was really easy. I've got two small children. I couldn't sit for, you know, like 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes at a time. So we were doing, I was taking like a couple of minutes. I spoke through to Kelvin, like, how can I fit this in my day with two small kids who don't want time away from me? 
So we spoke about how we can do a couple of minutes and then, you know, a really long rest period. So that really fitted in really nicely. And over time, my son, who was, you know, two and a half, three, he started to watch and started to see me taking this time. And I got to a point where I could explain to him that mommy's going to do her meditation. I just need a couple of minutes of quiet. And after a time, he started to join in. He'd sit with me, not for the whole time. He'd sit with me. He'd be looking at my phone because I'd have my timer on. He'd walk off. He'd come back and check. And as like the months, now the years, he would then say, oh, it's time for meditation. I'm going to meditate. And he'd take my phone. Obviously, he didn't know what he was doing, but he'd take my phone. He'd put on his timer. He'd start. So that was cute because I thought I want him to see these healthy ways of how we can manage anxiety. Um, And then there was a, I think we were at my in-laws and he said to my uncle, he got the, his uncle, he got my phone and he was like, right, it's time to meditate now. And he was like, what? He was like, yeah, I'm going to set up the timer. This is what mommy does. We're going to meditate. We're going to, it's really, really good. It's relaxing. (laughs) So now I meditate with Kelvin once a week. And I guess it's like three years on. I I haven't had it's you know it's it's a process it hasn't happened overnight but I'm in a place now where touch wood I haven't had a panic attack I can't remember the last time I had a panic attack it's probably been a good year that I haven't had a panic attack I can go out I can you know be with the kids I can go on a walk before I wouldn't walk anywhere because I'd be constantly thinking what if something happens to me I need to be in the car I couldn't go out for walks I didn't want to go to the park I didn't want to go with my kids on their bikes and now all of that slowly, slowly has has come back. And I feel now that I'm at a place where I still am an anxious person, I think, by nature, but it doesn't consume my life. I have, I'm not having the panic attacks. I can do the normal things that I was doing, which that all stopped for, for months, for months that all stopped. I mean, it was like crying on a daily basis and some days it would just be multiple panic attacks every day and I just thought how am I gonna this is never gonna end this is gonna be my life now and um, I think for me it was the consistency just that understanding right you know I want to change something I'm gonna do this five minutes in the morning five minutes in the evening let's see I've got nothing else to lose for me the doctors tried to prescribe me medication. I didn't want it at that time. I wanted to try and do something else first. And so for me, that's been a way that I didn't have to then go on the medication. And that was something that was important for me. So that's where I am. That's where I am now in a much better, happier place. Um, it's enjoyable. I find it really easy. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's great, Michaela. Thank you so much for sharing that. It's great. I love the story with your son and he went up to his uncle and said yeah. something like, okay, do not to meditate any time for like yeah. five seconds on the stopwatch or something. <laughs> 15 yeah. seconds. It was hysterical. That's great. That's great. I'm so happy that for you that, you know, you've gotten your life back, bottom line. Yeah. Yeah especially with the young children and your husband and work and everything. That's, that's, that's really what it's all about. As far as I'm concerned, how can people who are in difficult situations, can they, how can they, how can they move forward, you know, in a positive, healthy direction? Oh, that's great. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. Yeah. Jamie, Jamie, Jamie's in France, by the way. So go ahead, Jamie. We got a national audience today. Go ahead. Oh, God, so nervous. <laughs> so, hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so I met Kelvin online uh, in October of 22 um, after having done a, a big spell on YouTube looking at um, near-death experiences and uh, interviews and things like that. And I came across this interview of Kelvin by a lady called Trisha something or other I can't remember her name and um, it really struck me and something struck a chord so I got in touch with Kelvin and um, started meditating with him Um, so had I had my 
failed suicide attempt not given me the message that that was not the path for me and it, it's not going to work it would have been Calvin would have been my last chance saloon because I uh, you know I was what 43 and um, I'd spent most of my life depressed and medication hadn't worked and just feeling miserable and something just wasn't right um and i was <laughs> i feel like i was a bit of a tough student because um kelvin had to spend quite a while doing weekly sessions with me to help me get through this so anxiety and stress. So it was it was actually a, a a shock to find out that I was a high anxiety person. It hadn't struck me before, and that sent me down a kind of rabbit hole of looking into what is actually going on in my life. And I've discovered some very helpful things and had revelations. But the main thing really has just been the sense of inner calm um, that has come over me. <clears throat> certainly in the first few weeks and months directly after the meditation um but slowly but surely you know we're now what 17 months in and um that calm is spreading through longer periods throughout the day um the tempestuous seas don't knock me uh, all of, all over the place as much as they used to. I'm able to ride the the waves, and you know come bouncing back, and certainly just even out my mood, and open me up to actually wanting to get stuck into life because I've been resistant to it for what seems like forever. Um, so. I'm learning, you know, lots about, it's very helpful for me to find out about um, psychology and um, oh, so many things. Just having this, um, I think maybe <laughs> lust for life is uh, a little bit strong, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. A love for life and uh, a wanting to be here and enjoying of my time here. And um, to have such a wonderful wonderful heartful community behind me and surrounding me to to you know just just to lighten the load um to know that you're not on your own you can open up to anyone and uh, in this community and make some fantastic connections and you know just spark off some wonderful experiences and um i'm eternally grateful to you kelvin for or i will be eternally from here on in <laughs> i will be eternally grateful to you for um helping me i mean you've guided me very firmly and calmly and gently to help me get on the right path because the anxiety was high and it was interrupting and causing problems with my technique. I didn't know whether I was doing it right. And I kept going, going down dead ends and hitting the end and then, you know, um, having problems and, and you would just firmly guide me back. Um, so yes, Father Kelvin, thank you. So great to hear Jamie. And I know, uh, everybody's on their own journey and every journey is unique to each of us. Uh, and uh, we all have our own challenges in life and everybody deals with them differently. But this technique has helped so many people over the years that I've been teaching it for so many decades, thousands of people. And um, I'm so glad that you're one of them, my friend. Um, so just a quick uh, segue to a couple of things before I go to Maddie, who's sitting here with me, and Maddie, Maddie will speak next. Ma Maddie and I are in Philadelphia in her apartment together. I happen to be traveling. I usually live in Los Angeles, but I happen to be traveling on the East Coast. And so Maddie and I met for the first time since I taught her to meditate 
Um, and so here we are. So, uh, but just a quick thing about um, segue from what Jamie was saying uh, about myself and why I learned to meditate. So those you do, all my students know this, but those of you who don't uh, know me, I learned to meditate because I was in a very similar, again, everybody's unique, everybody's different, but I was in a very similar anxiety, high anxiety state that Michaela and, and Jamie described themselves to be in. Again, all of us have our own stories and our own way of experiencing life. But when I was a teenager, I was very, very high anxiety. And um, the meditation really helped me in terms of getting that behind me, let's just say, reduce little by little by little. Took a little while, just like it does for everybody and all my students, but it's it's been long in my rearview mirror, so to speak, for, for, for so many decades. Um, the other thing I wanna mention is that Michaela uh, mentioned um, fears about death and dying. And Jamie also mentioned that he had uh, looked at some near-death experience videos that uh, and, and heard a podcast interview that I did with Trisha Barker. Uh, some of you may recognize her name. She also has taken my meditation class um, and uh, talked about it on her podcast. But um, I help people, <clears throat> just reminded me to mention the folks that I help people with all kinds of anxieties and fears and stresses and so forth. And um, in particular, I have a, you could say a, a special expertise or experience or whatever with helping people with fears around death and dying. So um, if you know anybody or if you have anybody, have or you yourself have any issues like that, um, feel free to reach out to me. And I do a free, uh, consultation, initial consultation with people from around the world. All you have to do is go to my website, one of my websites, uh, just Google my name uh, and find me that way uh, and send it, send me an email from my contact page and we'll schedule it a time together. Um, so without any more talk about me, let's go to Maddie sitting next to me and I'm going to move the computer so you can see her really well here. My name is Maddie, and from Bull, I have had one medical conditions and have had numerous medical challenges growing up and in a and I now. Yeah, so she, she, Maddie, Maddie has cerebral palsy, and she's had a lot of medical challenges just what since childhood, right? And and, and now as an adult, right? Yeah. yeah. I actually have dystonia. 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 Okay. So I'm not having about one year ago with my mom because we were I having a very hard time. I was very depressed mm -hmm. from losing my sister mm -hmm. who helped me with so much. I was in a tragic car accident. I was on high doses of sight meds and had a numerous side that's not able to go on any other meds or my just. Tonya, which is, which needs more weakness. So as a result of me then how then I have been able to hunt all of my sightness, hunt weakly, doing just fine. 
And as a result, now I can be on other labs for my dystonia and chronic pain, which has greatly impacted my ability to function in therapies here in will my dystonia sit down and I was in site programs where they were teaching us how to meditate and their way a meditation did not work for me at all. That's so they ended up telling me just do the way you own on how then. That's interesting. So, <clears throat> yeah, so, so Maddie tragically lost her sister and, um, my heart goes out to Maddie and her family and anybody who's watching or listening to this who's lost any loved ones. And Maddie was very, very close to her younger sister. And her sister helped her a lot uh, with her dystonia, with Maddie's dystonia, and uh, died tragically in a car accident. So it's, and, and she was on all these psych meds that weren't and it re really doing much except having a lot of side effects and then and and you couldn't take your dystonia medication yeah at all at all so i couldn't tolerate any of or any of that right so 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 then maddie's not taking her dystonia medication which she needs for her obviously for her dystonia because she was taking the psych meds but now after just, it's only been a year, right, Maddie? Something like that. You know, you, she, she's not taking any of her psych meds. Now, just to be very clear to everybody, I am not a doctor. And Maddie has, has, has a number of doctors who are helping her with her dystonia. And she had other uh, psychiatrists and so forth help, you know, obviously with the uh, psych meds. But so that's a doctor decision, not now, a doctor decision. Now my psych power was is a medical psychologist. So whatever he recommends, he runs by the docs during my dystonia. Yeah, good, yeah. That way everyone is in agreement. Yeah, everyone's in agreement then. That's good. Yeah, the medical psychologist running everything by the dystonia doctors. Yeah, good. And the mother is an idea every night as I follow her way in a voice and believe it or not, I sleep through the night. While wearing a voice. Great that you're sleeping through the night now. That's awesome. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. It's huge. And it's actually on wait an hour feeling better and able to walk easily. Oh, that's huge. Yeah, waking up better. Uh, more rested and be able to walk more easily. That's huge, Maddie. Yeah. That is huge. So, so those of you who don't know, Maddie has different braces and so forth that have been created for her, uniquely created for her so that she can walk. And so if, with the meditation, helping you to walk even a little bit more easily is a huge thing. No, yeah. allowing me to tolerate them longer to tolerate tolerate them longer yeah yeah that's great that's great maddie i'm so i'm so heartened to hear this maddie it's so maddie my new friend here in philadelphia and uh 
Yeah, it's it's so great that that, that you've got this benefit, and I'm so glad your mom took the class, and then she suggested, hey, maybe Maddie would want to learn. So this is great. No, my mom was like, you're doing that. <laughs> you are doing that. <laughs> you need it. <laughs> and within week, I was all my sight now. And I made just Tony on that. Wow, within weeks, that's great. Yeah, and I feel way better. Way better, that's awesome. Way less like a point and mainly now my level. That's, that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing with everybody, Maddie, and they're. This is going to go around the world and you're going to have such an inspirational effect on so many people. Hey, yeah. It's beautiful. Beautiful, Maddie. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Sharon. Sharon. Hi, everyone. Um, my voice usually isn't like this. Just going through some vocal stuff. But... Um, it's interesting this how this sound, how this meditation, how this technique, um, how Calvin has has helped me in different uh, phases in my in my lifetime, maybe lifetimes. But um, and I guess I uh, I came into contact with Calvin in um, 2017 or maybe 2018. I know it feels like lifetimes. Um, and, uh, just to go back to that time period, um, at that time between 2011 and I would say beginning of 2019, um, I was in the hospital with, um, a, a manifestation of, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, which, um, I was in the hospital uh, 50 to 60% of the time for each one of those years um, with an NG tube um, resulting in intestinal blockages and subsequently um, just surgery after surgery. Um, it's uh, it, it feels like such a long time ago. I know it wasn't, but it seems like when I say that and I'm talking about a different person because my life has incredibly changed so much. Um, it was an incredulous time uh, looking back. <clears throat> so uh, what this did was it was almost like this. I was looking for something just to take away even um, just a small smidgen of the pain and the suffering. And I was seeking, yearning, longing, trying out everything. And um, and and Calvin uh, taught me, as he taught everyone here or, or to be taught, um, the turning within meditation. And what that did was it created a space for me to be able to um, sit with my pain and my suffering. Um, it changed the dialogue for me of my pain and my suffering. And um, I did it, I did a lot of, I'm sure everyone knows this term, a lot of med napping in those days because I would, you know, be up, be in pain, do my sound, go back to sleep. And um, it did a lot of healing in those days um, on a physical level. Um, and and by the beginning of 2019, I was kind of feeling better. And uh, I, I've i been in theater since I was five. And I said, uh, uh, you know, I want to get back into that. And um, I got into a theater show. And uh, I didn't realize that I would have stage fright because I never had it before. And um, and I was like, oh, I can't do this anymore. And so Calvin, um, you know, held space. We we did, you know, the sound, and and it 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 helped with that. So this this technique, this turning within, this meditation, um, was holding and healing different areas of my life. Um, and. Um, then, uh, so 2019, then 2020 happened and, um, I did become a, uh, licensed social worker with, uh, bereavement and hospice care. And I don't need to, uh, 
we lived through it, right? We we lived through it um, in the 2020, especially 2020, 2022, and the health space for for a lot of grievers, and I still do. But that time was very heavy in a collective trauma, collective grief experience, and when I was just saying the first part of my story, how it held space for my own pain and suffering during 2022, 2020 to 2022, when I was holding space for a lot of grievers during that time in my bereavement work, um, everybody would ask, how can you do this and not, you're, you're well, not run dry. And I know Calvin also talks about this because it wasn't a well, it was a reservoir. And so the sound, helped me have this reservoir to to hold space for so many others because I didn't feel the compassion to fatigue and I didn't feel all those other things. So this this sound has and technique has been with me in different and held different uh roles in, in different uh areas of my life. Um and also during that time period, um and I know that Kelvin uh his third book uh holds a lot of the uh past life connections. Um, in that time period, this uh, technique and the turning within also opened up to different areas of my own past lives. And with that, a, a lot of healing as well. In April of 2022, yeah, <clears throat> I, 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 I was married for 23 years, nine months, one week. And um, April 2022 uh, began the formal end of, of my marriage in in a, a pretty long-standing divorce, which ended January 5th, 2024. And um in that roller coaster ride of, of my own grief experience with this, and I had to keep my head, you know, above the, the sand above water, it was that technique, it was the turning within that really helped me to manage things that I had no clue of what to do. Um, Kelvin also helped a lot with support in that time. I'm so very grateful. Um, so here I am, you know, here we are. And uh, so where is this technique and and with me today? Um, I, I still get up. I get up twice a night. And that is because I don't have um, a large intestine. Those that know me know I, I tell my story very freely. Uh, so I do get up twice a night to, uh, you know, release my pouch. And um, it's the technique and the turning within that is with me um, during that time and helps me to to get that rest. Um, this technique, this meditation, um, it will always be there. It will always be with me. And I'm looking forward um, how it will hold space in the next transitions. Uh, for for the remainder of my life and for uh, other lifetimes. I think that's about it. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you for sharing that um, and being so candid about your health um, issues and your health condition and your, and your marriage situation as well. Thank you for sharing all that. I mean, it's, it takes a lot of uh, strength to be public about those kinds of things, both both very, very personal things. Um, but I'm so happy that the meditation has helped you. Thanks for that, sharing that with everybody. Um, <clears throat> Sharon mentioned a couple of things I just wanted to kind of um, uh, touch on before we go to our, our last person on the, on the panel today, Kamini. Um, but Sharon mentioned the, the phrase mednapping. So it's it's a it's it's an idea that um, actually one of my old girlfriends came up with the phrase. I got to give credit where credit is due. I didn't come up with the phrase, but um, some years ago. And the idea is that sometimes we're releasing so much so quickly that our system literally needs to shut down and sleep. And it can happen during the meditation. It can happen during the during the technique. It can happen during the rest period. So you may have heard some of the people, I think Jamie referenced a rest period afterwards. I always have my students rest afterwards, after they're done with the meditation technique part. Um, but falling asleep, as Sharon mentioned, is a very, very powerful healing 
modality. And what they noticed in some of the very, very early uh, experiments that they did on folks in the, the 1970s is that the quality of sleep when they fell asleep during the meditation was actually a better quality of rest and a better quality of healing than just if the person lay down and took a nap. So it's very significant in this notion that, as Sharon mentioned, of med napping is a very, very powerful combination between the meditation and the falling asleep, which we call med napping now. Um, Sharon also mentioned past lives opening up for her. And does that happen for everybody? No. <laughs> so, but can it happen? Yes. And um, have I had uh, students kind of, uh, if we want to talk about the more spiritual or esoteric kind of side of things in terms of benefits, have I had students who've had loved ones um, die and want to learn how to communicate with them uh, more freely and more spontaneously? Yes. And does it work all the time? No, but there's no guarantees just like with anything in life, but I have had students, and in the previous uh, panel two weeks ago, Megan shared with us her uh, very tragic, sad experience of her daughter dying um, in her early 20s, and yet Megan learned specifically this meditation technique to try to increase the probability of her communicating with her daughter, and it, and it, and it worked for her. Because why? Because we're not only releasing our stress and getting rid of our anxieties, as folks have talked about, but we, in that process, we are expanding our conscious capacity of our mind. Our mind, as if, is getting woken up in areas of our consciousness, our mind, or even in our brain, you could even look at it from a neurosynaptic, from a brain cell standpoint. So you can look at it from a very scientific, biological standpoint, or as Sharon kind of, um, you know, alluded to in a more spiritual consciousness expansion of our conscious capacity of our mind standpoint, either way, this technique does that and has all kinds of various positive effects in that regard. So Kamini, why don't you share with us, um, you know, how you're doing and how we met and that kind of thing. You're over in the UK as well. Go ahead. Sure. Um, firstly, what amazing stories. Thank you, everyone, for sharing. I've really enjoyed the session, um, hearing different experiences of this amazing technique. Um, and thank you to Calvin as well for um, sharing this with so many people. Um, so I met Calvin back in 2021 uh, online through another friend of mine uh, in South Africa. So I'm based in the UK, but I'm from South Africa. And during 2021, my mom was very ill and miraculously she's still with us here today. But at the time she was in ICU for 60 days. And because of COVID, I couldn't actually travel back to South Africa to see her. So I really struggled um, with just supporting my family from being uh, so far away from them, as well as um, just yeah dealing with the whole emotions because she's pretty much my best friend not just my mom so we're super close um, in terms of family and this friend had suggested the technique um, so my major concern was just sleep I used to always sleep like a baby um, I love my sleep eight hours minimum and during this period of course with all of the stress and what was going on uh, I struggled to sleep uh, in terms of the technique, it was just so easy. Um, I agree with, I think Michaela mentioned in the beginning that you had to set aside the time. So once it was part of my routine, it became really easy. Uh, so we had worked out the time that I needed to meditate and the rest period. And I just put my mind to it that I've got to do this twice a day and, you know, it's going to benefit me. And um, yeah, I found it really easy because I had tried different techniques before. Um, and what I had known about meditation before was along the lines of trying to control the mind and quieten the mind. 
And this was the opposite because you could just let your mind wander. And the bit that I really liked about it was the rest period. Um, maybe it was a time out in a way, even though um, I don't have responsibilities, don't have kids, uh, work's quite demanding. And I have a very analytical mind. Uh, I'm an overthinker. So I think that period of just mm -hmm. that time out of being able to, you know, rest is really helpful. And um, I absolutely love it when you fall asleep during that period. Um, so subconsciously, it's weird because I do it twice a day without fail. And in the mornings, um, I do it first thing after I've showered, before my breakfast, before work. And I tend not to fall asleep then. But when I do my second session, which is in the afternoon, once I get home or after I switch off from work, um, almost 80% of the time, I would say I actually fall asleep for 15, 20 minutes longer than the rest period, which is pretty amazing. Um, so I've been doing it pretty much every single day since we started without fail. And when I don't get to do it, I do notice the difference. Um, so basically I had family over visiting in December over the Christmas period. And I was just super excited to have family here. We were on the go and I just couldn't find time to meditate. And going from doing it every single day, twice a day to not doing it for, I think it was a couple of days, eventually, I just couldn't cope and I had to say to my family you know what um, I actually have to kind of just schedule time where you're gonna have to give me some space to try and just work this into the schedule um, so it's quite amazing when you don't actually do it so um, yeah try my best to to make sure that I do it um, every single day and it's just really if social things come up I may miss the second session uh, but without a doubt, you know, every day, um, it's pretty much part of my lifestyle. So I don't see it as, oh, I've got to meditate. I actually quite enjoy it and I look forward to it. And it's it's just part of, it's like brushing my teeth almost. Um, that's how it's become. So yeah, that's pretty much all I've got to share. Thank you, Kamini. Thank you so much. That's great. That's great. Yeah, you you kind of remind me at the end there, to underscore the flexibility and how I teach is it to be all my students I remind them to be flexible about it the length of time and when you do it is not so important it's the consistency of the practicing of the of the of the meditation process that's the thing I I, I have this analogy that I came up with a few years ago so fairly recently over the you know five decades that I've been teaching meditation. More recently, I came up with this analogy and I call it the swimming pool analogy. And it doesn't matter when or how long you're in the pool. When you jump in, you get wet and you cool off every time. Doesn't matter when, doesn't matter how many minutes you're in there. It'll experience, your experience will be different. It'll feel differently if you swim around for 15, 20 minutes if, versus if you just jump in and you dunk and you get out but it cools you off every time. And this is the same thing with meditation. So I encourage my students to be flexible about it. And at the same time, that helps them be regular in terms of being consistent in the twice a day routine. Because the more exposure, the nervous system, our neurosynaptic, our psychology, our emotions, our physical, biological body, and our consciousness get the more it gets exposed in a regular basis to the meditation process, the more familiar it becomes, and the more benefits build up and accrue over time. And the other thing that my students, you've heard them describe here, um, is how the consistency of the practice starts to build and 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 and, and create a consistency of benefits that last outside the meditation time. Um, Jamie talked about that as well, I know, and all of you have talked, all of, all of the panelists talked about it as helping them externally. Um, Sharon with her physical, biological, uh, autoimmune issues that she was born with, and um, as well as her relational issues, those are external you know how how to help uh, help help ourselves basically through the meditation process 
manage our lives more easily outside the meditation time. So in that respect, we meditate for, I say we meditate, sometimes I say this phrase, we meditate for the applied effects of the meditation outside the meditation time. And so that's what all of the folks here are given various examples of how it has helped them. And Maddie, clearly how it's helped her externally with her, her physical, biological challenges. I mean, Maddie has a master's degree in uh, special education from George Mason University, right? Yeah. Yeah. And and so, but she has serious physical challenges. And so- That are not getting better yet. And they're not getting better yet. The physical challenges are not getting better yet. And she's been obviously working with medical professionals for a long time. And allied health providers. Yeah. All the various allied health providers in addition. Yeah, right? They know just one now. They know me in and out now. Yeah. They know how I know that we are not in very little change. Yeah, very little, very small changes, but... Little in employment, <laughs> but they are like, hey, no at us, we are eat going and see what happens. Yep. But after yesterday, they were very excited with the problems they saw in one week. Oh, well, in a night voice. That's great. Yes, so that was just yesterday that they saw, <clears throat> very excited about the progress that they saw in just one week of wearing that night brace. That's awesome. So these things, these are, these are, um, you know, for Maddie, who is in such physical challenge situation, those incremental uh benefit incremental steps in progress are huge huge yeah they were not out there they were like wow omg <laughs> omg right this is more than just good yeah more than just good that's awesome that's awesome to hear and, and for the meditation to help Maddie in her, let's just say her emotional and psychological health, that, that our minds and our bodies, people know that our minds and our bodies affect each other. And so to the extent that we can strengthen our minds through the meditation and our emotions and our biochemistry, because I know from my personal experience, having been in the very first experiments done on meditation when I was a teenager, they took blood panels and they me measured all the different hormones and chemicals and so forth, dozens and dozens of them, that it has a significant change on our biochemistry. All of that affects us physically, mentally, emotionally. So it's a very simple technique, very easy technique, um, and, I, and, and as you've heard from all the, the folks here today, but I want to close in the last few minutes of our session today and just open it up to anybody else who has not spoken or any questions that anybody has for any of the panelists, anybody who's who's watching um, here on Zoom. <clears throat> any questions at all? Anybody want to speak up or anybody else want to share uh, who may have taken the class already in the last few minutes? Anything at all. One thing, uh, if, if there's nothing anybody wants to share or ask, one thing I want to mention is um, somebody uh, mentioned uh, during their sharing today, one of the panelists mentioned uh, that I work sometimes on a weekly basis and some for some folks on a daily basis, depending on how acute how severe how since how, how serious their need is whether it's anxiety related or whatever and um <clears throat> i'm here to help people 
That's what I do. And um, I never turn anybody away for financial reasons. I'm always here for my students. They know this. I give them a lifetime follow-up and the words mean what they say. And with me, I ended up doing that all individually. Individually. Good point. Thanks for mentioning that, Maddie. So that's a really good point. Um, so for some folks, I may do an individual class for various reasons. Um, and I may do a private class with people for various reasons. I also teach group classes. I teach a public group class once a month. And you can go to my website. You can see the schedule there on turningwithin.org. Uh, or you can go to kelvinchin.org and you can connect to my other uh, three websites. I have four websites. So I have an Overcoming the Fear of Death website. I have a book website. I have three books. Uh, this, this book, actually, I brought one of my books here to be with Maddie because I read one of my essays to her either on Zoom or on uh, in here, because I'm face-to-face -face in person with Maddie. I'll read one of my essays with her. Um, but this is one of my uh, books. This is my second book. It's a collection of 67 essays. And there's a chapter on meditation in this book. Uh, it's called Marcus Aurelius Updated 21st Century Meditations on Living Life. Um, but um, I have a book website, and Sharon mentioned uh, briefly um, in her um, sharing today that I have a th my third, she mentioned about my third book, which is about my memories that go back 6,000 years. Um, and uh, feel free to reach out to me, as I said, uh, for free. Reach out to me uh, on my contact page on any of my websites. You can send me an email. And I'm happy to uh, help people in whatever way I can in, through, through, through the work that I do. Um, anybody else, any other comments before we call it a session today? Again, thank you so much for all my students coming and helping here and sharing their stories. I really, really appreciate it. And you're an inspiration to everybody in the world for all the various things that you said. Somebody, I think I heard somebody speak up. Go ahead. Oh, Connie? Yeah, go ahead, Connie. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. I just, uh, yeah. Meditation has really helped me. I, I also keep a gratitude journal. And I, I, when I meditate at night before I fall asleep, I, I just go through my day like thanking, thanking for everything that's come my way. And, and I, I just feel like now I'm at peace. Like I know everything's going to be okay in the end. You know, you know. Yeah, that's a great point, yeah. Connie. Thank you for sharing that because you bring up another point that I want to mention. Um, and Connie's one of my students and has been meditating for some years now, but she mentioned that she, if you couldn't hear her clearly, she's in the car right now. But what she was saying is that right. you were saying that um, she does a gratitude journal at, at night. And she meditates regularly, but she also does a gratitude journal, which brings up a good point, which is what I teach, I am an inclusive person. So what that means is people can do other things too. It's just not like, I don't tell people you have to do this and only this. You can't do other self-development things as well. No, I mean, in fact, I've even taught Buddhist monks to meditate and what are they doing in their monastery all day? Hello, they're they're monks. They're Buddhist monks. They meditate yeah. all day doing their Buddhist meditation. I don't tell them not to do that. So I just told them, do what I'm teaching first because it's going to be very, very easy. They do that first before they start their day. And then they do their Buddhist meditations in their monastery. And they do their second turning within meditation again. And then they do more Buddhist meditations. So I'm very respectful to them, but they would all come back to me, interestingly, a month, two weeks, a month, six months later, and they would say that they got more out of their Buddhist meditations. And I did not tell them this, but I'll share this with you uh, because this was some decades ago and uh, you know, um, they're probably not gonna see this video, but, um, but, I, but I didn't tell them this, but it probably was because they were not straining so much in their Buddhist meditation after they learned what I taught them. 
which was very, very easy. And as you heard Kamini and others talk about, there's no controlling or concentration or clearing the mind of thoughts or trying to think, feel in a, feel a certain relaxation or feel peacefulness or whatever in this meditation, the way I teach it. And so I think my conjecture is that it helped make their tech, their technique that they did in the monastery actually easier. And that's why they would all come back to me and say they got more out of their other meditations that they were doing before I even taught them. So um, again, thank you so much, everybody, for sharing. Thanks, Connie, for sharing that. It was a great point because it, it allowed me, it reminded me to mention that um, that point about um, my being inclusive as it relates to self-development processes. Everybody, we're all on our own self-journey. Everybody, that's why it's called self-development. I'll, I'll end the session with this one last comment. And that's that we are all on our own self-development personal journey. And the key words are personal and self. That means that we're all figuring it out ourselves. I'm not perfect. Nobody is perfect. We're all on an eternal journey, I think, learning about ourselves, about the universe, and about other people. And um, that said... I'm respectful about how people go about doing that because we all have free will, which means individual decision-making ability to decide to do this or not do that, to do go this way or not go that way. And so uh, I'm respectful of that. And, and, and I, I, I embrace that in my teaching of my work when we're talking about self-development techniques, for example, okay? But if anybody is curious, they wanna learn more, about how this meditation that we've heard about today is different from other meditation techniques, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Just Google my name, Kelvin Chin, um, or you can go to kelvinchin.org uh, to link up to all my other websites and uh, feel free to reach out to me anytime. Thank you again so much to everybody on the panel today. I, my heart goes out to each and every one of you. Thank you for sharing and um, we'll, we'll be in touch soon. Take care, everybody.